what we're going to go through in this exercise is is the preparation involved in, in raising queen bees. Now this is the most complex part of beekeeping. Uh, these skills are the hardest for any beekeeper to achieve, but to competently raise queen bees or breed queen bees, it's necessary to, to be able to know the steps involved. Beekeeping uh, involves the use of young queen bees. Young queen bees in a hive are much more productive, lay more eggs and produce more bees. And this in farming bees is very important to a bee farmer to have the maximum population to enhance the honey production. So more bees, more honey. Now the, the steps involved are selecting a breeder. The first step is to find a hive of bees that is a good producer. It's, it shows no signs of viral or bacterial diseases and the temperament of the bees are such that you can handle them and they're gentle by nature. Now in the tropics bees tend to be very aggressive and very defensive and it's an ongoing problem to find bees that aren't too aggressive and we've been breeding bees here now for nine years and compared to where they were nine years ago they are vastly improved but there's probably another 10 years of work ahead of us yet to, to get them up to what I would consider a good standard. Now in, in selecting our bees for graft, our brood for grafting, we go to the hive, which is our breeder. We remove the lid, I'll just place that there, upside down. Apply some smoke. Remove the feeder board and place that on top of the lid. In case our queen bee is underneath, we don't want to drop it inside and squash the bees. We then apply some smoke across the surface of the bees to calm them down and we remove the outside frame. We can shake any odd bees off and place that in front of the entrance. We now move across with using our hive tool to prise the frames apart and we can inspect the brood area of the hive. Now the brood area is the breeding area and that is where the queen is laying and in here we have very very small larvae which are of a right size for our grafting. I'll just check a wee bit further. That is sealed brood. These, these bees have been capped over. If you remove the cap, you'll see the larva inside. So they are more mature bees ready for hatching. Gentleness when you're handling bees is very important. Bees don't like shock. Uh, here I notice the queen bee. This bee here is the, is the mother of all bees. This, this is the queen bee. These, the ca different castes here, are, these are the worker bees. This is the queen bee. The queen bee is one queen bee in a hive. This queen bee lays all the eggs in the hive. Queen bees are relatively shy and they will always try and hide. But it's a, a, again, it's a skill in finding bees, finding queen bees, you develop an eye for it with practice. There's no easy way to, uh, to teach you to find queen bees other than to, to recognize them and a lot of practice. You'll notice there the bees are balling into a heap and the queen is, is disappeared inside there. 
so the queen is relatively shy. So we'll place that back in there, we'll move these across. The frame I want is this one, we'll shake the remaining bees off it, but shake them down in the hive, don't shake bees off up here because they'll all go in the air and cause a lot more disturbance. If you want to remove the bees, you can gently shake them into the hive and we can take that frame with us. It's important also when we leave this hive, although we're coming back to it, to cover it because robbing bees will rob each other if they have a chance. So because we're coming back to this hive, I'll place the lid upside down. That lets me know this hive's not finished. It also prevents any bees robbing this hive while it's lying open. Because we're taking this frame away to take some eggs from it, and we'll be bringing it back to put back in with this queen again. So the next step is to go to our, our nucleus colony and talk about the, the starter hive for queen bees. We have a uh, what we call a nucleus colony here. This is a small box and we use these for breeding bees, for using as mating boxes for, for mating new queens before we actually transfer. We'll be talking about the use of these in normal beekeeping, but at this case we're using this for queen raising. Now we open this box and again we have set this box up with five frames. Four frames have brood and bees there and it has sealed brood, young bees, and lots of bees. The ingredients for raising, successfully raising queen bee cells is to have lots of bees. This is a uh, what we call a, a swarm box and in it we've placed our bar of cells. These cells we've been put in 24 hours before and that gives the bees time to clean the cells, to, to uh, warm the cells and so therefore the success of our queens is enhanced. So it's important to put this cell bar in to your starter hive 24 hours before you actually do the grafting. Now a starter hive is the bees, the brood of a hive but no queen. This hive is queenless and that triggers the impulse for bees to want to raise a new queen. So therefore we're using their natural impulses. When bees are crowded and short of room they tend to want to swarm and that's nature's way of multiplying dividing the colonies when the when the when the home for a for a hive of bees gets too small in say a tree or something like that they go into a swarming mode will raise a new queen and drive the old queen with half the bees or all the old bees with the queen will leave and they will set up a new hive in another location. So this is nature's way of, of keeping the species going. We are using that to artificially force them to raise queen bees. Now when bees are swarming, they raise many, many cells. We're using that same swarming impulse in making a very strong nucleus colony of bees with no queen and in, on occasions we can also force feed it with sugar syrup to create more urgency. That then will entice the bees to start not one of these queens, but probably 20 out of 30 they may accept as new queen bees. 
So this is what we're about to do now, is to take this and do the grafting to, to uh, start off a new lot of queens. So before we, we, before we go away and do that, we replace these frames back in here, again keeping the hive warm, and we'll put the lid on upside down, again which reminds us we're not finished, but prevents robbing by other bees and getting this hive too upset. We need to keep it as calm as possible, and we, we need to be gentle with our actions, and we will now go away and do the grafting side of the, of the process. We're now going to proceed to do the grafting. We have our cell cups, which we've had in the hive for 24 hours, and we have our, our frame of selected larva. Now the, the, the larva size we are looking for is a three day to four day old larva. When a queen lays the egg, it takes three days to hatch. So we have to intervene in the third and fourth day to graft that larva to a queen cell and change that bee from becoming a worker bee into a queen bee. All bees, worker bees, are female. The drone is the only male, and the, the unusual thing about bees is that the queen bee, if she lays a fertilized egg, it becomes a female. If she lays an unfertilized egg, it becomes a drone, a male. So those the, that's the uh, unusual distinction about honeybees, in, uh, which are different to most other breeding programs. So what we are actually doing is selecting what would be destined to be a worker bee and intervening and transplanting that larva into a larger queen cell which the bees recognize as a queen cell. And so the bees will then feed this queen cell or larva on royal jelly which is a milk that they produce from their hypofungal glands in their, in their heads and it is like breast milk to bees. This is a very highly concentrated food which will develop this what would be a worker larvae into a queen larvae and eventually produce a queen bee. Now in the selection of doing that we we select a, a brush for doing the grafting. Now the brushes we use are Sable hair, triple O, sable hair brush. Very fine, very soft. Don't be tempted to use a cheaper nylon brush because the, the bristles on the brush will be too sharp and may damage the lava when you're transferring it and defeat the purpose. So there's really no substitute for a high quality brush in doing this job. Now the process of, of grafting is a skill that takes a long time to learn. Uh, it's a bit like riding a bicycle. You'll fall off many times, but when you master it, you'll, you'll, you'll do it for life. It's, it's something that comes to you naturally. The way I normally advocate for people to learn is to start by, by placing the brush in the, in the cell and lifting the larva on the brush. Now that's a very, very small larva. Now the action of feel is more important than sight. So to develop that, you can just take them and place them on the frame. And do this a thousand times, and then you'll get the art of lifting them and releasing them from the brush. The action used is to push the brush in and cause the brush to bend at the tip, which, which acts like a spoon. It goes in under the lava and lifts it. To, re, to, to release it, you must place it down and then roll the brush and slide out from underneath it. So we'll, we'll have another go here. The brush needs to be kept fine and kept together. 
we have a lava here. Now to, to release that lava, we, we place it down and we roll the brush and move out from under it. So that's, that's the action we're going to use. So we now have to select the very small lava and place one in each cell. You need good light for doing this and the action is is repetitive but you need to work reasonably quickly because these young larvae can dry out very quickly when they're out of the hive. And so if you're a beginner beekeeper and doing this for the first time, I would suggest that you only do four or five like that. Just put four or five on a bar and start with that because the time you're taking to get these grafted and in back into the hive could defeat the purpose because you're working too slowly. So the trick is for a new beekeeper to do less and do more often and you'll end up with the same results. We, we, we work with roughly a 30, 30 odd cells here and we expect to get 19 or 20 of those accepted each graft. But we are doing this proficiently, quickly and the steps are familiar to us. So we'll just carry on and we'll, we'll quickly graft these one per each. You need good sight and you need good light. If when you go in to, to, to lift the grub, you'll notice some of them I miss. If they don't go on the brush and come out easily first time uh, and you've rolled them around and disturbed them, they're, they're more likely to be damaged, so therefore I uh, just go on and select another one. I don't persevere with, with one that, that gives me trouble. Some, some lift out very easily, others are quite difficult. If they're difficult, I leave them, because uh, you're more likely to damage them the more you roll them round and the more effort you make to get them out, the more likely you are to damage them. We've now grafted one larvae to each cell. We turn those down again and the unusual thing about bees, queen bees, are always raised in a downward position whereas, whereas worker bees are in a side position in a cell but when a queen bee is raised she's always raised in a downward position. So we now take this away and put it back in our starter hive and we can return this back to our breeder hive. We now have our, our uh, cell bar ready to go back in. And there's one step we need to, to check here. It's because this, this nucleus colony was made up 24 hours ago and it has not got a queen, therefore they may have started raising queen bees themselves from their own eggs. And this is something we don't want because we want them to raise these eggs from our breeder queen. So we have a quick check to make sure they haven't started raising any queen cells before we put our bar in. If they were going to do something, you would find a cell being raised on the edge of the brood area. Looks okay. Satisfied this is a box of, of 
queenless bees. There's no queen in here. So we place this frame of grafted lava in the center of our bee. between the two frames of bees each side. Those bees now will cluster and start to develop those queen cells. We'll just quickly put that back in and replace the lid. Now we leave this alone for 24 hours. We don't disturb this hive again for 24 hours. And in 24 hours we'll be able to read the results because we'll be able to see whether they've started raising these queens. If they have accepted them, they'll start feeding them and they'll start developing the cell cup. And we'll take you to a hive in 24 hours to show you what the result is after a 24 hour gap. This one we take back, put back in our breeder hive. So we'll return this to our breeder hive. We now come back to our breeder hive, smoke the entrance, Remove the lid gently, smoke the bees here, keep them down, remove our lid the same way, part the frames in the centre of the brood nest where this frame of brood came from and replace it back in the same position. The brood nest or the breeding area of the hive needs to be kept together at all times because that's where the warmth of the bees is and they need to maintain 34 degrees plus or minus one degree for bees to be able to breed. So this is much like an incubator. They must be able to keep it warm. Bees cluster and keep the brood warm when it's too cold and when it's too hot, the bees move out. You'll often see bees hanging out the front of the hives uh, which is their way of reducing the numbers inside and controlling the temperature. But we'll more about that afterwards. We've replaced this back in, back on our breeder hive. That hive is now back to normal. And we've completed that exercise. What we now need to do is to wait 24 hours and then check the results of our grafting. If the grafting's successful, that's fine. If the grafting's not successful, you repeat the process. Righto, we're coming back now to our nucleus colony that we grafted into 24 hours ago to see what the results were. Again, we should treat this hive gently because shock, we don't want to upset the bees, but keep it calm and we quietly, not too much smoke, just enough to control them because too much smoke also can damage your, your grafted cells. We'll just move this over, prise it open, push them apart and free up this middle frame. This is the frame we're looking for, which we put in with our grafted cells. And we need to see what results we've had. We will just gently shake some of the bees from that, just to clear them. Now we can see the ones that the bees have accepted. They've started to raise a wax cell cup on the end. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19 accepted out of 30. Now that's, I would consider, a reasonable acceptance here in the tropics because we don't have very strong hives. Uh, it is difficult to raise large numbers of queen cells. But if we can do 19 or 20 as a, as a, uh, as a batch, then we only have to repeat this process four or five times to produce a hundred new queens. So it, it is a workable process and it works, it's simple and it works to provide young queen bees 
which are of a particular breed from our breeder hive. So that way we are at least in control of the types of bees that we're breeding. They're disease resistant, their temperament is right, and they've got a record of being good honey gatherers. So those are the only three criteria that we work on. Uh, we keep it simple, but it's effective. So those, we, know, and we now know that the queens have been accepted and they've started to raise them. We place that back in again to keep them warm. And we can mark on our calendar that those will hatch in probably 12 days time. So what we will aim to do is to remove those and put them into single individual hives on about the 10th day from now. Making sure that they're placed in a new colony of bees before the queen actually hatches. And once she hatches into the new colony of bees, she will take over and start off a new colony. And we will come back to these in 10 days and use those cells and we'll make up some divisions and some splits and some multiplications of hives as another exercise to show you how to use these queen cells and place them into hives. In the meantime, they, they stay for the next nine days. After nine or ten days, we, we come back and check our queen cells for progress. And we'll just open this now and have a look at uh, what, what progress they've been making. The bees will be quite, a, quite aggressive or quite angry because they're uh, queenless. So they're quite defensive and the, and the bees are also fairly old bees. So the older bees generally are more aggressive. You can see they're stinging my hand already. I'm, purposely not wearing gloves because it's 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 easier to, to handle uh, checking this without gloves because you need to be very gentle so if we lift this out quietly we will be able to see the progress of what's happened now if I sweep these bees off just gently that will expose the cells that they've accepted now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen cells here that are now progressing and they've been sealed over. We we can now take these away one at a time by breaking them out like this and using those to prepare new hives for these to hatch into as new queens. So we will we'll progress on to that next. We've checked our cells, we know what we've got here, and so we'll just place this back in. And uh, we have to be gentle not to bump them, knock them around. We place that back in, a wee bit more smoke because those bees are getting a bit anxious. And place that back in. And we can now go and prepare different hives for putting out these queen cells. The important thing here is we, we raise them in a group and we put out an individual queen cell with frames of bees but no queen and when this queen finally matures and hatches she will chew the top off the cell and emerge and take over the hive and that will be a new queen, a new hive and that's how we multiply the bees. Right, the other, the other uh, manipulation that I wanted to show you quickly was that if you have a hive like this that is strong and this one here that's not so strong, it's a weaker hive and you want to strengthen it, you can remove this hive Push this one across and replace this one back here.
Now that's a manipulation that you can use if this hive has been struggling and this one's really strong and not all hives develop at the same pace. Some get strong very quickly, others struggle. So that's another technique we can use to swap one with a, a weak one with a strong one and that helps boost their strength and brings them up evenly. It will cause a bit of fighting but uh, they tend to overcome it. Here we have what is called a queen excluder. It's called a queen excluder because the, the metal grill has gaps which only a worker bee can get through. A queen bee being bigger can't get through. So this is a useful tool and was invented mainly in the temperate climate beekeeping systems. The experimental work we've done with these in the tropics means they're counterproductive to honey production. And the reason why is because our honey flows here are very slow. And this grill acts as a barrier to the bees. They don't really like going through it. But in a temperate climate, where the honey flows come in very, very fast over six weeks, the bees are forced up through it and they will go through it and put honey in boxes above it. And that way you can separate the brood and the queen from the boxes of honey. And that's very ideal, but it doesn't work in the tropics. What happens in the tropics is because this is a grill and the bees don't like going through it very much, our honey flows being very, very slow means the honey comes in and the bees will pack it below, in the hive below. I'll just put this box on this hive to demonstrate that uh, If we were in a temperate climate, in Fiji we only have two boxes. One with the queen and the honey is all in this area. In a temperate climate country, you would place that on top and you would place a third and even a fourth box on top. Now the brood area down below where the queen is and raising the bees is separated from the box on top. When the honey flow comes in a, temperate, in a temperate climate, the bees will pack out honey in the bottom, but it comes in so fast, they'll force it up and store it upstairs. What happens with ours is that in our environment, we only have two boxes. Now, to work this queen excluder in, in our environment, would mean that it has to be placed down below. And that way we would trap the queen and her, her brood area in that box. And then this box we would place on top for honey. Now I know some beekeepers here do this, but where it falls down is this. Because the honey flow is very, very slow, the bees come in and they pack the honey in the bottom box in preference to coming through and putting it up here. Now when the bees in the bottom box hatch from their cell, the worker bees fill them up with honey. That stops the queen laying and reduces the population of the hive slowly. So therefore it reduces its ability to gather a surplus of honey. So here we call these honey excluders, not queen excluders, uh, because they tend to make the bees bind the, the bottom box with honey. It becomes what we call honey bound. And so therefore there's no room left for the queen to lay. So therefore the population of the hive reduces. If your population of your hive reduces, your honey production reduces. So this is why we don't use these as a tool in the tropics. In my experience, all our hives we don't have these queen excluders. But we do have a very good use for queen excluders. And I'll show you that now.
if we're wanting to divide this hive into two units, we would first have to find the queen. And we would have to know that the queen is in this box or this box. Now a competent beekeeper could check that and check that and probably find the queen reasonably quickly. But for a beekeeper who's not that competent, this tool is a very good thing. Because what we can do is we can take the bees, the frames from here, and shake the bees into the bottom box. Without having to find the queen, we know if she's in this box, we're shaking the bees down. Okay, now we can safely assume that if the queen was in this box, she's now in this box. We can now place that queen excluder on there and then check in here that we've got some, some honey and we've got some brood, which is unhatched bees, enough to start off a new colony. So we've got three frames of brood, some frames here with a wee bit of honey on them. We'll put these empty frames to the outside and keep the brood to the centre. We can now place this box back on here. In the 24 hours, the bees will come back up here and feed and look after the brood. So tomorrow, we can come back and we can take this hive off and we can add a queen cell to it. Or a cage queen and start off a new hive. So that's how we multiply our hives. Coming back to this hive, we put the excluder in, we split it, put the queen down below, shook all the bees in, and put the excluder on and put the box with some brood ready to do a division in the hive. This had to be left for 24 hours, so we'll now open it up and, and see what results we've got. Now we, we have now bees back up in the top looking after the brood but we know that the queen is still down below because she can't come through this queen excluder. We have frames of brood which we want to hatch young bees. We have some here with some honey. We'll just move that brood over. What we want to do is get a, at least four frames of brood and bees, like we have here, to form a nucleus colony for a new hive. So we have one, two, three, four frames of brood and bees and a frame of honey, with some honey anyway. Now the procedure we use here is that we take this top box off 
and we place it onto a new stand. Just lift this straight off onto here. Now, to ensure that the bees in here don't all go back to here with the queen, we will do another maneuver which will confuse it. And that is we'll lift this hive and we'll turn it and face it this way and we'll bring this hive across into its position. Now what will happen here is bees will, will fly from this hive now, they will drift and they will actually come back into here and keep the strength up in this side. So we now have to get a, a queen cell, I'll just go and get our queen cell. I now have our ripe queen cell from our starter box and I'll lift out a frame of brood and bees and we'll place this cell down near the brood area. Now it goes in facing down. You just push it into the comb. The bees now will look after that, keep it warm and it will hatch in another three or four days and take over as a newborn queen and take over this hive of bees and that will give us what we call a split and that's how we can multiply strong hives by dividing and the advantage of this queen excluder as we explained is to ensure that we know the queen is down below in this half. We now take this away and we normally normalize our hives by putting this back together feed we can put on this side in the meantime. This is the one we need to look after the most and we can put a new lid and a feeder board on this one. And the end result is now we have two hives where we had one before. So for beekeepers who want to multiply their hive numbers at, in the off season after the honey flow when the bees are very strong and there's not a lot of honey coming in uh, say uh, September, October, November, December, January, February, March those, those months of the year is ideal for splitting hives because they're very strong and there's no honey for them to gather so it's a good time to use the bees to increase the numbers so that's one system What I want to uh, discuss here is the making of a nucleus colony. Now this is called a nucleus colony because it's just in a small box and can have four or five frames. What we've got here is, is again four or five frames of bees and brood but no queen. Now these are, this hive is basically a queenless hive four frames of brood and bees. The thing that's missing is the queen. So what we can do with these is the same process. We go to our cell bar and we take off a queen cell from our starter hive. We take off a ripe queen cell which will hatch in another two days. We can then take one of these frames of brood out preferably quietly put that in against the brood again. And try and keep that cell to the centre of the bees in the middle of the cluster. So we'll gently push that over, push that one against it so that the bees can form a cluster around that cell and keep that queen warm. Again, we close that up and we leave that for three to four weeks. In that time the queen will hatch, she will come out take over the bees, she will then go on a mating flight and become a mature mated queen. Now we'll go and have a look at a hive that is now mated and laying and you can see the difference. When we open the hive with the brood, which is unhatched bees, 
That's the first sign that tells us it's a queen here, and she's mated and laying. So we'll have a quick look through the bees and see if we can find that queen. cycle again for a nucleus colony. This nucleus colony is a, a supply of bees or a queen or a new hive. Now what we can do with that nucleus box is we can take the queen away and cage it and introduce it to another hive. Or we can take all of the bees into a larger box and start a new hive. So that's the process we're doing here with the queen. So that's, uh, with our queen cells, we have the option to either split hives and increase our numbers. We can make nucleus colonies to raise queen bees for, for sale, or to have queen bees for replacing queen bees in hives, or we can use the whole nucleus colony with the queen to start up a new hive, or fix a hive that has failed. is check this hive and assume that it is the queen has failed and queens fail for a number of reasons sometimes they're not mated properly in the first place sometimes we damage them when we're opening and working our hives and we can come back and find that a hive is queenless and if we don't attend to that properly then we could come back next time and find it's died right out and we have an invasion of wax moth as we talked about previously. So we find that this hive is, is suffering from no queen, it's queenless. So the answer for us is if we have nucleus colonies, which to me is like the spare wheel for a car. If you have some nucleus colonies as a beekeeper and when you're working on your normal production hives and you find there's a problem, you can fix the problem in the short term by introducing a nucleus colony of bees. Now we do that by not mixing the bees. If we put the queen, if we put the queen straight in, these bees here would kill her because they don't have the same uh, pheromones or smell. So how we do this is we take two sheets of paper and we place that right across the top. Then we take our second box and we place that squarely on top again. We remove some frames from here. And make a, a, a gap in the center. Now we go to our nucleus colony and we gently open that being careful to make sure all the bees go in. So we bump the lid in there for a start in case the queen was on the lid. We then carefully just take one frame at a time and place them into there. This way we're introducing the bees and the queen and the brood.
to a new location. Now you can see in here, there's still a lot of bees. And inside here, the queen is possibly still running. So what we do then is sharp bump, tip it upside down, bump down. Check the box then to make sure the queen is not in there and we can remove that box. Simply then push these over, we place one more frame there. These frames can go back in the box here. Put on the sugar feeder. On with the lid. And we'll just tear a bit of that off to make it a bit more easy for the bees to get in the front. Now we have a united hive. The bees will eat through this paper from the bottom and the top over the next 24 to 36 hours. They will chew the paper out and slowly unite with each other. The queen that we put in the top will go down and take over the whole hive. So that's uniting bees together, the simplest way. If you are running a beekeeping honey production unit with two box hives, it would be valuable to have some of these nucleus colonies as backups or as I said before spare tires, spare wheels because if you find a problem with your honey producing hive you can quickly rectify the problem by requeening the hive giving it more bees and bringing it back up to to production level we can now go away with this and start all over again take some brood and bees from a strong hive raise some queen cells put a queen cell in there raise a new queen and put it aside ready for the next time we need it. Similar to going and getting your spare tire repaired after you fixed the, the problem. So that's the management system that's the easiest in the tropics that I've found is using nucleus colonies to replace failing hives and keep the number of production hives up.